Looking for a training tool to help you learn how to fly? In this episode, we'll review probably the most realistic flight simulator yet, so stick around. Welcome back to the channel. I'm JR, the Traveling Tech Guy, and if this is your first time here, welcome. Thank you for checking out the channel. We feature videos on how to get started in the hobby cheap, what planes and gear you're going to need, as well as we travel around to different RC events to bring you the sights and sounds of what this hobby is all about. And if you find value in this video, please be sure to hit the like button as it helps the YouTube algorithm to share my content with more folks like you. In one of my earlier videos, I talked about how Real Flight RC Flight Simulator version 9.5 from Horizon Hobby is probably the best tool for beginners in 2021. And if you'd like to check out that video, just click on the card up above. You do have several options when it comes to buying Real Flight 9.5, such as a software only package, a digital download, a trainer edition for the Steam Gaming Network, or a package that includes the Interlink DX controller and the latest offering, a combo package that includes a Spectrum DXS transmitter and a Spectrum wireless USB dongle. The cool feature about the combo package is the DXS transmitter. The DXS is an actual transmitter that you can use to fly with a variety of Blade, E-Flight, HobbyZone, and Bind and Fly basic models. Prices range from $99 up to $199. For this review, I will only be focused on the package that comes with the Interlink DX controller. So let's take a look at what you get in the box. Inside the box, you're gonna find the Interlink DX controller as well as the DVD. The Interlink DX controller is designed after a DX6 six channel transmitter that's made by Spectrum. So all of the buttons and switches are in the same location and function the same way as a DX6 which makes it nice if you choose to go with Spectrum as your first transmitter as everything will be familiar to you. All of the switches, all of the buttons will be in the same location. The DVD comes with over 170 different aircraft you can choose to fly, from a variety of airplanes to helis, drones, and a lot more. There are over 40 different flying sites, including 3D fields and photo fields to choose from. The photo fields in the simulator are highly detailed and simulate an actual flying field, which it's pretty cool in my opinion. All of the aircraft in the simulator are designed to have the same flight characteristics or as close as they can get to the actual flight model. Now some of the aircraft in the sim are designed to simulate the use of SAFE technology which was developed by Spectrum. And if you're not familiar with what SAFE is, it stands for Sensor Assisted Flight Envelope. It controls how much pitch and roll your aircraft will have as well as levels off the aircraft if you let go of the sticks and provides a panic button for recovery. This will give you every opportunity to have successful flights during your learning process. With a safe technology, you get three basic modes. You get beginner, intermediate, and expert. The beginner mode will protect you from doing something really crazy and drastic, such as overcorrecting controls to keep you from crashing. On intermediate, you still have the safety net of the protection from crashing, but it gives you a little bit more control over how much you bank and how much you pitch your airplane. In the expert mode, you're on your own. You're in charge of all the controls. Now let's talk about what computer requirements you need in order to run Real Flight 9.5. I do have to hand it to the developers at Real Flight for not making 9.5 require a high performance computer. As long as your computer is running at the minimum, Windows 7, a Pentium processor running at one gigahertz, has 512 megabytes of memory or RAM, at least 10 gigabytes of free space on the hard drive, 32 megs of dedicated video memory, a DVD drive to install the software, as well as an internet connection to get the latest updates and do other downloads. If your computer meets those minimum requirements, you're gonna be able to run the software. Now, once you have the software installed and start up the simulator, you'll be presented with a mini menu that will give you the option of scenarios, aircraft, and flying sites. Scenarios will let you try on different challenges with various aircraft. And aircraft will let you pick between 170 different models, and then you can pick what type of flying site you want, like a grass or an asphalt runway. Now, once you're in the simulator, 
You can change your aircraft and flying sight at any time by either using your keyboard and mouse combination, or if you have the Interlink DX controller, you can use the thumb wheel to make your selection. If you look across the menu bar, you will see gadgets listed. Gadgets will let you add items to your screen like a mini transmitter so you can see what function a switch performs or you can add the binocular gadget to see your plane when it is far away from you. Now personally, I wouldn't use the binocular gadget. But the simple reason is when you're out in an actual flying field, you're not going to be able to zoom in on your airplane to see how it's flying. So to me, it's kind of pointless to have it in the simulator. But if you want to use it, go for it. Also on the menu bar, you're going to see a listing for training. Training gives you a personal one-on-one -on -one instructor to work with. You can watch. As you complete training sessions, you will receive certificates to document your accomplishments. And remember the safe technology I spoke of at the beginning of the video? Let's hop into a session and let me demonstrate how it works. For this demonstration, I'll be choosing the Apprentice STS 1.5 millimeter with GPS. And I'll be flying from the Carl Henson field as I primarily fly from a grass field at my home club. One of the gadgets on my screen relates to the safe technology showing the beginner, intermediate, and expert mode. To switch between the modes, I use the default switch that is mapped to that function. After advancing the throttle, the plane will begin to roll down the runway until enough lift is generated for takeoff. Once you're in the air, you'll want to back the throttle down to about half throttle for a level flight. As you can see by the mini transmitter, no matter how far I push a stick to the right or left, the safe technology will limit the amount of banking that I can give the aircraft. Let's hit the reset button and show you how the plane responds in intermediate mode. Like before, you want to advance the throttle enough to take off and achieve level flight. This time, you can see that you can bank and pitch a little more so your turns can be a little sharper in beginner or intermediate mode. If you get into trouble, you simply let go of the sticks and the plane will ride itself into a level flight, where you can then once again take control back over the aircraft. In the case of where you really get in a bad spot, pressing the panic button will cause the aircraft to level off in circle. Then pressing the panic button again, you'll once again have control over the aircraft. Now in my opinion, once you have mastered the previous modes of beginner and intermediate, then I think you'll be ready to try on the expert mode. One of the common things you will face at the flying field that you can replicate in the simulator is wind. You can adjust the speed, direction, and the amount of turbulence. Rarely is there a day you won't be faced with at least five to 10 miles an hour wind or even higher. If you learn to fly with the wind in the simulator, you'll be able to deal with the wind in real life. Now that we've seen some of the highlights of what the simulator is capable of, let's talk about the pros and cons of Real Flight 9.5. Now without a doubt, Real Flight 9.5 will help you learn how to fly. You will develop the muscle memory skills needed to control your aircraft no matter if the aircraft is going away from you or coming towards you. Another pro, if there's a particular aircraft you are interested in and it's in the sim, you can try it out before you buy it. Nothing worse than spending a couple of hundred dollars on an airplane only to discover you don't like the way it flies. A definite pro is no matter what the weather is outside, it's always a great day to fly in the simulator. You can also work on perfecting those 3D aerobatic maneuvers and then show them off at the flying field. Probably the biggest pro is gonna be the cost and how much money it's gonna save you in the long run. I spent $179 for my version and it came with an Interlink DX controller. Now, this may seem expensive, but think about this. The average cost for a ready to fly trainer is around $350. Now, if you crash say 10 times in the simulator, all you have to do is hit the reset button and you're ready to go again with a brand new airplane. Now factor in the cost of replacing the actual model that many times. Then you'll see it could add up really, really quick. Not to mention, if you think about the total number of airplanes that come in the simulator on how much it would cost you to actually buy the real model, 
you have the ability now to fly it for all of those for only 179 bucks. I really only have a couple of cons when it comes to Real Flight 9.5, and it pretty much affects all simulators across the board. One is going to be the field of view. When you're in the simulator, all you can see is what is right in front of you. Of course, you can use the thumb wheel to quickly glance back at the windsock, but other than that, all you have is what's in front of you. You can't look to the right or left of you like you could at an actual flying field. And the other is going to be temperature. You can't feel the temperature inside of the simulator. You can't tell if it's hot or cold, and temperature really affects how your plane performs, especially if it's got a nitro or gas engine. And if it's really cold outside, it's going to affect how you fly as well. So all in all, Real Flight 9.5 is going to be the most cost-effective investment you can make, especially starting out in a hobby. Now, if you'd like to get your own copy of Real Flight 9.5 along with the Interlink DX controller, I'll put a link down below in the description to my affiliate account. Now, it won't change how much you pay, but it will allow me to receive a small commission to help grow this channel as well as fund future videos. So until next time, I'll see you at the field.